Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can display testimonials as carousels using the Testimonials Carousel widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. Right now, we're looking at some examples of this widget's use. The page we're on is dedicated to the Testimonials Carousel widget, and it serves as a way of showing you the different possibilities you have for making your testimonials. This is a showcase of several different customization and layout options and their combinations. You can make testimonials with images and without. Give them a colorful background or make them match your page surroundings. You can also pick how many testimonials will be shown at one time. And you can combine this widget with any of the others in the key add-ons collection if it will help you realize your site design. So, the different widget examples on this page may have given you an indication about the kind of customization options you can look forward to. So, let's dive into specifics. We're going to see how this widget works and what you need to know to use it. Now, this is what the widget looks like by default. We have three items with a certain preset layout. So, let's see what we have in terms of options. The first is Enable Slider Loop. It's set to Yes by default. This allows the carousel to keep moving in a loop on its own. If you don't want that, you can switch this to No. Then we have Enable Centered Slides. It's set to No by default, but with the layout I currently have, it's almost as if it were enabled, since I have three evenly spaced slides with the middle one in the center. I recommend you enable it if you have partially visible columns on the sides. You'll see what I mean by that in a moment. For now, let's move on to the Enable Slider Autoplay option. This is set to Yes, and it allows the carousel to start moving as soon as the page loads, so the visitors don't have to trigger it in any way. Below this, we have the Slider Duration field. The default value is 5000 milliseconds, and that's the amount of time that the slide is shown before being replaced by the next one. And the slider animation duration lasts 800 milliseconds, and it represents the duration of the animated effect that makes the images seem to slide, so it's like a transition between images. Following that, we have the Enable Slider Navigation option. By default, the navigation is enabled, so we have the arrows on the sides. But I want to turn mine off, so I'll set No here. Next to that, we have the Enable Slider Pagination option. It's also enabled by default. It's these three dots at the bottom. I'll set it to yes so I can see the status of the option at a glance. Then we have enable partial columns. It's set to no by default and with three columns it's not going to make much of a difference to me if I enable it. But you can set it to yes and if you have an even number of columns like four and you enable centered slides, the option I mentioned a bit earlier, then the slides on the edge of the carousel will be shown as cut off. In a way, you'll have a preview of the incoming and outgoing slides. After this, we have the number of columns. I'm going to switch mine from 3 to 1. There. Below that, we have columns responsive. This option lets you decide how many columns will be shown on a range of different screen widths. I'm going to leave it set as predefined so I don't have to make any changes, and given that my carousel is showing only one column, it's going to stay that way on any other device. But if you'd like to manually adjust these settings, you can pick the custom option instead. Following this, we have the space between items option. If you're displaying more than one column, you can add a pixel value here that will determine how much space you'll have between each slide. Since I'm using only one column, this option won't do much for me. Below this, we have these three items, each representing a single slide. If you want to have more slides than the default three, then you can click here to add more items. Before we start editing the items, I want us to take a look at the layout set of options. The first option in here lets us pick the item layout, which shapes the look of our complete testimonial carousel. The one we have selected is boxed. But there's also info below, which looks like this, side quote, which looks like this, side with image, that's this, and standard, where we get this. The one I'll be using for my testimonial carousel is side quote. There. You can see that the layout I picked doesn't have a title. There's just the quote, or testimonial, its author, and their job title. 
Now that I have this picked, we can get back to the general settings. And let's open the first item. Our topmost option is the title. The text here is a placeholder if you have a layout with the title. Since mine doesn't have it, I can just erase this. Ok, below that we have the text field. This is where you'd put your testimonial quote. I'm going to replace this, just give me a moment to type it in. Ok, then we have the author's name. This one's pretty straightforward. And author occupation or job position. Below these we have the author image. If you have and want to add an image of the person you're quoting. I won't be using one, so I'll just remove this dummy image that's taking up space. Then we have the title color. It comes with the standard color picker, but as I don't have a title, there's no need for any color changes here. But after that, we have the text color. This will help you change the testimonial text. Then there's the author color, for changing the color of the author's name. It comes with the standard color picker and you can use the slider here or set a hex code below. And finally, we have the author occupation color that will let us change the... Let me set this to the first slide so we can see. This is the color for the author job title. Our next option is called background type. Let me open the classic just to show you briefly. This option only works with the box testimonial item layout. You can see an example of that layout on the widgets page. The testimonials here have different images as backgrounds for different testimonial items. So with the background type option you can set either an image or a single color as the background so long as you're using the boxed item layout. Since my layout is side quote, this won't do anything for me. Alright, now I'm going to fill in the content of the other testimonials. Since that's going to take some time, I'll skip ahead with the video. Here we are. All the testimonials content has been customized. Now, my design includes a background section image. So before I start to stylize my testimonials carousel, I want to set that image. So to edit the section, you need to click here, on this middle icon with dots. This opens the section editing options on the left. And from there we need the style tab. Then background overlay. Open the background type called classic. And click here to pick your image. This is the one I want to use. Now, this image is going to have a parallax-like effect, so I need to set a few more things. For starters, I'll set the position to center-center. Then, I'll switch the attachment to fixed. As you can see, this works only on desktop screens. Then, it's going to be no repeat for the repeat. Following that, the size should be cover. This will ensure the image fills the given dimensions while keeping its aspect ratio. Finally, I'll set the opacity to the maximum, 1. This will keep my image entirely opaque. Ok. And now we can head back to our testimonials carousel options. And open the style tab to see what we have in there. Actually, before that, I almost skipped the developer tools. When we open them, there's just one option here. If we switch its setting to yes, it will display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. The faint text you see on the right, which we can easily copy for use elsewhere on our site. Ok, and now we can move on to the style tab. The first set of settings here is for the slider navigation style. Since I disabled my navigation, we can't see any options in this section. I'll show you what the settings are a bit later, once we go through everything here. I'll activate my navigation so the options become accessible. For now, let's take a look at the slider pagination style settings. There's the pagination position, which we can keep on the inside or set to outside. I'll do the latter. Then we have the pagination offset. This option lets us create more space between the testimonial content and the pagination. Let me show you. Like this. And you can use the slider to make your setting or type in a value. I'll put 160 pixels for mine. Then we have the pagination color. This is for the normal view. I'll set white for mine. There. We also have settings for the active pagination view. With it, we can change the color of the pagination dot connected to the active slide, the one that's being shown. Then we have the border type option for framing the pagination dots. I'll set solid just to show you. And we can't see it yet because I need to give it a width first. Two pixels will do. And it needs a color. 
There. Now we can see a thin red border around each dot that makes our pagination. I'll reset this as I don't plan on using a border, but if you want to, you can try the other border types to see which one you like best. After this, we have the pagination size option. It's very straightforward. By increasing the value here, we increase the size of the dots. I'm going to set 9 pixels for mine. There. And our last option is for the space between bullets or dots. This lets you space out the pagination dots. I'll set 8 pixels for it. OK. Now we can take a look at the quote style settings. This is where you can pick your quote icon. You can use the icon library, there is a large selection to choose from, or you can keep the default one. Or you can upload an SVG. That's what I'll do. Insert media. And this is where you can change the icon color. I'll make mine white. Alright. And we can also set the quote size here. Use the slider here or type in a value, whichever is easiest for you. I'll keep mine the way it is. After this, we have the style section. In here, we can set things like the title tag. You can pick any of these tags for your testimonial title. Since I don't have a title, this option won't do anything for me. So next, we have the title color and title typography. Again, without a title, these won't do me much good. We'll take a closer look at the typography options in a bit. After this, we have the text style settings. So the text tag, where we can change the tag for the testimonial text. I'll keep mine the way it is. Then we have the text color, which I'll use to change the color of my testimonial text to white. Following that, we have the text typography settings. The first option here is for the font family for our text. You can scroll through this list or search for the font if you know its name. And we can change the font size either using the slider or by setting a number value. Then with the weight option we have a range of values we can choose from. We also have the text transform option which we can use to make our text, for example, uppercase. Depends on what look you're going for. There is also the style option if that's something you're interested in. Following that, the text decoration option then line height, and I'll use this one to adjust the height of the line with the text. It's announced by default, but you can switch it to pixels. I'll put 44 pixels for mine. Finally, we have the letter spacing option that gets us more space between letters. And that's it for the text typography settings. Our next option is the author tag. Just like with the title and the text, you have a range of tags to choose from. And we have the author color. I'll make mine white by typing in a hex code. Then we have the author typography settings. These contain all the same options the other typography settings did. So I'll just make the settings I need. That's author font size, 16 pixels. And I don't think there is any need to cover the rest of the options here. OK, carrying on. We have the author occupation color. Again, we have this typical color picker which I'll use to set white as my chosen color. Following that, we have another set of typography settings. These are for the author's occupation or job title text, and I won't go into explaining them. I'll just set my font size to 15 pixels. There. This wraps up the style set of settings. Now let's take a look at the one after that, spacing style. In here we have the title margin bottom option. Since I don't have a title, I can drag the slider as much as I like, but I can't show you. Generally speaking, this option would let you add more space under your title and before your text if you need it. We also have the item text margin bottom. It's similar to the option above, it lets us add more space under the testimonial text, like so. For myself, I'll set 21 pixels. Below this, we have the item text padding. This option lets us create more space around all sides of the testimonial text, like this. Next, we have the item image margin right. This would let me add more space to the right of my image, had I set one in my testimonial items. Don't be fooled, this has nothing to do with the image we added as the section background. OK, finally, we have the quote margin right. With it, you can add more space between the quote icon and the text content by increasing the icon's right margin. 
Now, don't think I forgot, I promised earlier that we'll take a look at the navigation style settings, so let's go ahead and enable the navigation. Yes. Now, when we look at the slider navigation style settings, we can see several different options. The navigation position lets us set the navigation arrows to the inside, outside, or we can put them together. You can see faintly that they are together now, under the quote icon. I'll put this on the outside, just as an example. Then, the hide navigation lets me set below which screen width the navigation arrows will stop being visible. There are a few choices here. You can try them all out and see how they look on different devices. The next option allows us to adjust the navigation vertical offset. This lets us move the position of the arrows up and down. And the navigation horizontal offset lets us move the arrows to the left or the right. Now, using navigation arrow previous, you can replace your left navigation arrow if you want a custom one. You can pick something from the icon library or upload an SVG. And you can do the same for the right arrow as well. Then we have the color setting that lets us change the arrow color. I'll put this one, for example. We also have the option to change the background color for the navigation, which could look like this. Now, we also have the same two settings for the navigation display on hover and the addition of a new option, enable hover arrow move. It's on right now, so we get this movement when we hover. But if we switch it to no, then there'll be no arrow movement on hover. I'll keep mine as it is. Now, going back, our next option is the navigation arrow size. It does just as its name suggests, it increases the arrow size. Following that, there is the navigation arrow holder width that increases the width of the arrow's holder, which you can see from the expansion of the background color. And the navigation arrow holder height does the same for the height. Ok, that's it for the slider navigation style settings. I'll turn off the navigation now as I enabled it only to take you through the options. And update so I can save my work. Now I can see the final result of my work. This is how my finished testimonial carousel looks. Three items for three slides, it's all there. My chosen text color and background image are there. And that's it. To finish up, we can take one last look at the widgets page. Knowing which options you have in the back end and how to use them, you should be able to make your own testimonial carousel elements easily. Here we can see the example I copied for this tutorial. Beyond that one, the widgets page has other examples whose design you can mirror or use as inspiration. Of course, you are also free to create something entirely unique. How you decide to use and stylize this widget is entirely up to you. Simply decide which of the possibilities offered by the testimonials carousel widget works best with the style and design of your site. Finally, I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making testimonial carousels can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its testimonials carousel widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!